Hi, we're going to talk about tearing down a liquid image MRG 2.2 today. A lot of people have been curious what's inside and how you get at it and how you might be able to modify it. So here we go. Um, you're really not going to need very many tools. You need three Allen wrenches, um, a 564, a 332nd, and a 764. You'll need a number two Roberts driver, very popular in Canada where this was made. I have no idea why they use it, but there it is. Um, so let's just take a look at this helmet. It uses a sharp LQ6NC01 5.7 inch diagonal LCD display. Um, it's monoscopic because it has a single lens and we'll open it up and take a look at that. So the first thing to do to get access to this head mounted display is to remove the foam liner. It's just velcroed in and you just gotta work the velcro until it comes loose. Um, it may sound a little rotten but it does come out in the end. This is just molded foam and out it is. So you can see relatively simple piece of foam. Now what we're left with is the internals which are the cabling that comes from the control box into the helmet, um, headphones, a set of rubber goggles that actually come from a welding mask, a single lens that is actually just a desktop magnifier, um, the optics um, spacer which is just a vacuum formed two pieces of plastic and the LCD which is behind here. So let's open up the front first and if we'll take our 564 hex key and just do undo one screw on top and one, two screws on the bottom and the whole cap pulls away and underneath is our liquid crystal display LCD panel. Um, there are really a couple pieces of interest here. This silver thing, big silver thing in the back is the rear of the panel. Um, this is a small circuit board which is the backlight inverter which uh, generates the high voltage for the fluorescent light that backlights the screen and this is a little liquid image manufactured um, interconnection board that connects two ribbon cables. There's a ribbon cable that goes into the back of the LCD display, comes over to this board, interfaces and then goes to another ribbon cable which runs up the inside of the helmet and it's actually under this little velcro but you can see it here and up into a little inner connect board in the back of the helmet. Um, the shell is made of fiberglass, um, pretty straightforward. I'm sure it's hand laid up and um, you know not a lot of tooling in there, but that's simple. To now to extract the LCD, the optics, the whole kit and caboodle, grab yourself a 3 30 seconds Allen wrench and undo these four screws, sorry, and so forth and so on. You just keep twisting them on until they come off. 
I'm actually not going to pull this one off. I'll show you one that's already been disassembled. Here we go. What comes out of there is our little goggles, the lens, plastic casing, and the LCD display. So the first thing you can, you'll notice here is that the casing is actually made of two parts and I've removed the goggles but I'll show you how to do them just in a little bit. So it's just two pieces of plastic. Liquid Image riveted them together. If you want to get this apart you're going to have to drill out the rivets. They're pop rivets. Um, a sharp drill bit just wiggle a little bit and they'll come loose. I generally reassemble them with screws either a 632 or a 440 screw uh, 3 eighths of an inch ought to do it um, but it's your call so I've drilled out two of these already which is enough to pry loose the LCD display and there we go there's our LCD inverter and interconnect board this is the molded plastic that encases it all and holds the optics together and so in fact normally when it comes you'll see that the goggles and the lens are already attached and by spreading this apart it releases the goggles and the lens. If you want to remove the lens there's two Roberts screws, number two Roberts screws undo these and the lens will pop free. What you'll discover is the goggles are part of an inexpensive welding mask. Um, I've seen them at Sears but I'm sure you can get them a lot of places. And the optics is actually a little tabletop magnifier. Um, it's a square, a rectangular magnifier that's set for a, a distance of about this far. Um, Liquid Image has ground out the nose piece um, so there's space for your nose to go in, but it's a stock piece of optics you can pick up for, you know, 10 or 15 dollars um, very easily. Um, and so that's really the whole optical internals of a liquid image MRG 2.2. So, looking at that, let's jump over to the control box, which is how video signals get into the MRG 2.2 um, from your video device. MRG 2.2 takes NTSC composite video. It's what's known as RS-170A um, and you'll need to stick by that. It, uh, it does not accept sync uh, from any other format from VGA or uh, PAL video it's a standard, standard definition TV signal. Um, it does have the option to receive a signal in a red, green, blue format rather than composite video format, um, but it, the signal timing is still the same as RS-170A or NTSC video. Um, there's a front panel switch that lets you choose RGB or composite video based on what you're applying to the control box and by definition this there has to be a sync signal superimposed on the green. Um, you'll see two rows of connectors. You can connect your video to one and you can loop it to another device off of the second bottom row of connectors. They're essentially in parallel or you'll need to terminate your video um, with a 75 ohm terminator. Um, power supply is universal. You do have to switch it. 100 and 10 volts for US um, or switch it over for European power, 220 and it handles 50 or 60 cycles.